Hello! I'm gonna be playing some Grandia 3, but I want to go over the audio setup that I have working right now, because it's, uh, it's pretty weird. So, we're using Mumble here as the microphone. I have two users connected to it. The first client is on the Mac here, QN Mac. Um, this is literally this. It's what I use as the output for the microphone. Um, and it is streaming into the audio device black hole. Black hole two nanos here. Thankfully, Mumble makes it easy to choose an audio device. Mum, uh, Black Hole is a separate program. I'm pretty sure it's free. It's basically like a very light version of Jack for Mac OS. There are other alternatives, but I'm, well, not poor, but lazy and don't want to buy programs. <laughs> But I don't actually use Mumble, uh, Black Hole exclusively because that's not really how that works. So Black Hole captures Mumble and uh, by outputting to Black Hole, uh, it's acting as a black hole. I can't even hear my, I can't hear an echo of my voice on my computer. It's not coming through my headphones that I have plugged in. Um, which is convenient because I don't really want to listen to myself while I'm talking. So I use a MIDI setup with a multi-output device um, to cover basically the rest. So here for the uh, multi-output device, which I'm using as the uh, default system output device. It's outputting to both black hole two channels and my USB headphones. Then OBS is configured in the desktop audio to um, not sure where the setting is. I figured this out a while ago. Yeah, desktop audio here is black hole two channels. So it captures um, what's going into black hole, which is mumble, but also the default multi-output audio device also going into black hole as well as my USB headphones. So I can hear the game. But I can't hear myself. I mean, besides literally just hearing myself speaking. I'm connected um, to Mumble on my phone, QN phone here. This is just using a, like, normal iOS uh, Mumble client. But any Mumble client would work. You could use another device, um, which is connected to Mumble for this, obviously. But the reason I'm doing all this is because my Mac's uh, internal microphone kind of sucks. It picks up everything going on in the house, which is less than ideal. <laughs> I also have really easy access to push to talk on my phone here, which is kind of nice. I mean, you can set OBS up or whatever to obviously just use push to talk, but this is also convenient. I'm using a local area network uh, mumble server. So that's just running on a separate computer on my main Linux computer, but it could also be running on the Mac itself. 
or if, if for some god awful reason you could run a server on your phone, then you can do that too. And the same setup works on Linux as well. You're just going to want to use like Jack or something instead of Black Hole. I think that covers the entire audio setup. So onto Grandia, this is not my uh, main save card. This is what I've been using for the dialogue transcription project. It's a uh, Grand Dialogue 3. Dot, I'm not sure what PS2 memory cards are saved as in PCSX2. Dot PS2 apparently. This is my, uh, super old memory card. File. And my main save for actually playing the game. I don't really use, uh, cheats on this save. Like, in most of my other saves, I have... The good old This thing, my dicker. I'm not going to go over how that's set up right now, but there's a page on the Grandia fandom. If I upload this somewhere, maybe I'll link it in my description. But this gives access to like a million different convenient things. The most general purpose one here is the debug menu. You gotta switch here under the field sub menu, you have to switch into debug mode. And then pressing select anywhere will show this uh, menu with like everything in it. If you want to set up while you're away from a save point, it's handy. And not everything here, like, works all the way, but it's convenient for sure. There's also menus and stuff for accessing shops and whatnot. And you can give yourself items. Which I think is through the shop menu? Yeah. You can just give yourself, like, one of every single item here if you want. I gave myself three. And, uh, I've got a lot of stuff now. Not everything is fully functional here, like, some of the stuff is, uh, not complete. So that's all the equipment in the game. And there's also a bunch of unused spells, which are basically just player-controllable versions of spells that enemies can use. But there are a few returns from, like, Grandia 1, like Cold and Stram and... A whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, on my main save, I don't really use any of this. <laughs> debug mode also gives access to the battle debug menu, which is generally more interesting. All the debug menu stuff is controlled with the second controller. 
So obviously you either have to have a second controller or configure PCSX2 to have more keybinds for uh, that side. I mostly use the number pad. I think I actually failed to enable debug mode. They'll never catch us now! Unfortunately, you can't conveniently enable debug mode from inside a battle, so if you forget it, going into a boss, you're kinda just screwed. There's those three numbers in the bottom left. I do not know what they mean. But from here, you lose access to the main debug menu, unless you already had it open when you were going into the battle. And instead, all the second controller buttons uh, get mapped to the battle debug menu. Which has a lot of stuff. Sorry, I need to get this out of the way. Pick a card. Any card. Okay, first round out the way so we can actually think about some of the stuff that's available here. First round in this fight is, like, always exactly the same, so it's boring. There's a million menus here. Um, right now I'm gonna try IP Stop just to show off that. This gives options for each of the players and enemies in the battle. If you set it to on, they don't move along the IP gauge, obviously. So there's everyone, just sitting still. Um, this is zero indexed, so zero, one, two for the enemies. And you can tell which one is which because it corresponds to the letter on the IP gauge. It's kind of obscured here, but we've got A, B, C, A for the excise Omega, and B and C for the two last keepers. Through the parameter menu, you can change um, everything about any of these enemies, basically. Or your own characters. There are multiple pages to this, so I'm gonna try switching to another page here and see if I can put one of these guys to sleep or whatever. I actually am not 100% sure whether this works or how it works. Nope, I have no idea. I've never tried to inflict sleep on an enemy through debug mode. But we can impact their hit points. I guess it's a little hard to show when uh, no one's active. So there's Yuki. Oh, now it's lower on HP. The main attraction of this generally is to make an enemy super powerful. Or just to take an enemy out of the fight. It underflows. So now we can go for the sex size Omega and make it a uh, Marginally stronger. So hit points and attack and everything are all available here. Probably don't need a hundred thousand attack.
Generally, messing around with this stuff, you're probably going to want to use save states, uh, plentifully. Probably dead here. I don't know. Here I go. I don't think I have more boots on elf. Nope. Pick a card. Any card. I think the extent Omega has a combo ratio break. Like, there's a chance that every time it hits, the damage ratio will get reset. I know that Zorn has this, and possibly some other bosses, but I forget how it's represented in the debug screen. I'm aiming for a huge damage ratio. And then hitting it with a big head. So that would have done like 4,000 damage normally. That didn't actually deal that much damage. Some moves are kind of weird and don't use stats the way you would expect. I haven't looked into this at all enough yet, but like, healing is not based on your magical power, it's based on resilience. So it's possible that some offensive moves are also similarly fucked up. That's an auto cancel. Anytime that you attack the x Omega while it's idling, which means not in any other animation, it's not recoiling from damage, it's not preparing to use a move. If you use a special move or anything like deliberately targeting it that's not a normal combo or critical, it will auto cancel. That's a 100% guarantee. That's an auto cancel, right? I've got it. Oh, nice. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, so I'll flirt to secret method, got auto cancel. Good job. Now, if we hadn't gotten that secret method, my idea there was to show that if the move could activate later, once the Excise uh, Omega got past Calm, Made properly as long as we did like before it got to act obviously. So common spike here would get auto cancelled. But stun force takes a little longer to execute. So that hits fine. 
Um, the timings are really tight though for this enemy because its moves don't take very long to actually act. You're almost better off if it decides to use like a combo or something instead of a special move just because it'll be in that moving state for longer. It's non-idle state. quickly. I'm not super sure what qualifies an enemy to get knocked off its feet yet. Dodge the critical. I think the XI Sigma uh, Omega has an about 30% dodge rate. This is something that's actually visible though. Like readily. That's sway weight here, it's actually 45%. Does this stack break here? STK break? Stake break? That might be related to the thing about it's uh, resetting its damage ratio, but I'm not 100% sure. We were definitely landing a lot of hits in a row, so obviously it's not just a flat 50% chance to reset damage ratio. Well, that was a mistake. He's gonna get auto cancelled here. Ulf can't get him on time. On the other hand, this is fine. It's not past con yet. Actually, it is. But anyway, because it's in damage recoil, it's vulnerable to moves. It can't auto cancel. Pick a card. Any card. And that was that, because it was no longer recoiling. So I guess I have Berserker on Alfina. Which also impacts, um... All aerial combos, I believe. Anyway, one thing to keep in mind about aerial combos is that any aerial hit will boost the damage ratio by 5% instead of the standard 3%. The damage ratio is super finicky and very quick to reset to 0%. There's ages between Donna and Ulf here, so I don't think that I can get Ulf to, like, reach and reach calm or act and continue the damage ratio here for any longer than what I've got. I also doubt that Donna can really use any serious moves and deal a lot of damage. Homing shot always works immediately though, and the 189% is going to apply to every hit, plus it'll get another plus 3% for every hit. Pick a card. Any card. Hey. 
Though, I think the damage ratio reset at some point during that? Not exactly sure what the um, condition for that is again. But the damage ratio, the thingy, oops, oh my god, wrong button. The indicator in the top right, which is currently uh, not visible. It'll show like a total damage thing when the uh, damage, when the combo ends. It'll turn red and say total damage. I believe. Mm, too fast. It must have just finished recoiling from all set. attack hit it, but it used its move anyway. Which could be related to the thing that happened just now with Dark Mist. swing. I forgot that I have any healing spells equipped, lol. Time to recover! Across the entire party. It's for a new challenge I was doing before. Depends how quick the boom is. If Yuki reaches Act before the X Nice Omega passes Con, um, that's gonna be auto cancelled, obviously. But timing's just fine. Oh. However, it might reach act. Yeah, so when it reaches act, time gets frozen. Time only unfreezes once the uh, once boom finishes. So most moves do freeze time, but there are some which don't. Mostly in the fire line, but there's. A couple other spells like Diamond Dust and Zap All, which also don't freeze time. I guess Zap doesn't either. Anyway, spells which don't freeze time leave the IP gauge moving. So everyone's progressing along the IP gauge and also doing all their normal um, combos and criticals, which can lead into aerial combos, etc. But once another character reaches Act, and they're using a move which, well, any move besides combo or critical or defend, um, time freezes for the entire battle until the active uh, unfreezing move finishes. So the x size Omega reached uh, Act using, I don't know, whatever special move it was using. And time froze while Boom was finishing. Now we had a line Donna to use a critical, and we were going to hope for that critical to land um, while Boom was active. But Donna didn't even get the power card while that was going. I'm not sure with Time Frozen if it would also freeze uh, her projectile card or not. Kind of curious about that, but I don't know. But anyway, she didn't even get to launch her card. So, why did the x size Omega still get cancelled, even though it had reached Act? It was able to get cancelled because Boom left it in this.
Okay, back from BRB. Anyway, the reason that X Eyes and the reason that the X Eyes Omega was cancelled is because it was left in a prone state from Boom. So even though it was at act, it couldn't actually use its move yet. It had to wait until it got back up and returned title. So but during that time, Donna had also basically reached act. So she got to act and swung, uh, sent out her card, her critical hit. And that made contact before the X Eyes Omega returned from idle. Bar return to idle. Stop being prone. So it was actually 100% of the way to act, but we were still able to get to cancel them because it was prone and was finishing up its get up animation. So that's one example of like a million of the ways in which um, character animations are really relevant to gameplay at tight, not really edge cases, but when it comes to tight timings like that. Okay, so what next? I have no idea. Let's uh, just keep fighting this thing. Burn strike! That was kind of cool. I was hoping that Alt was going to dodge its attack, counter attack, set it for a 200% damage ratio, and then Burn Strike would hit it. Burn Strike was timed there so that um, it would only get. Uh, Alfina would only reach act while the XI's Omega was attacking Ulf. Anyway, the XI's Omega did hit Yuki, uh, Ulf. After that, it was in an idle state. Like, very quickly. And in that idle state, it's capable of sway. Like, a character can only dodge an attack if it's idle. It can't be prone, it can't be doing anything else. Sway only works if the character is idle. But the X doesn't make it in return to idle like super quickly. So it dodged Burn Strike, the first bird that hit it. And because the X doesn't make it always counter attacks, it. Um, appeared at the caster of that spell, Althea, and attacked her. But I don't really remember exactly what happened here, but I, I, I don't, like, remember what happened. But I think that Burn Strike might have hit the XI's Omega before... before the Omega actually got the chance to attack. Like, it started attacking, but because it was attacking, it was no longer in that idle state. So it had a 100% chance of getting hit by the next bird. Or something else might have hit it. Maybe Alfina dodged it and counterattacked. Maybe Alfina dodged it and then a bird hit it. And hence Alfina missed. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, that's one of the nice things about these active moves like Burn Strike, is that once you've casted them, they're sort of like a fifth player, because your own character who casted it is now an idol, but the enemy is still being targeted by this passive thing on the field. So even though it counterattacked that, Alfina was an idol, so um, like if it did end up attacking her and making contact, she still had the opportunity to sway out of its way, because she was an idol. Well, I was hoping I'd throw it in the air, but it didn't. Hot. 
Kira hadn't yet reached the con, but it uh, was recoiling from damage. It was prone. These aren't official terminology or anything, I just make up words, terminology. Pick a card. Any card. Yeah, see how its damage ratio got reset there? Maybe that's just something that happens with Helping Shot. Hell, I don't know. I know that it does happen um, when you're fighting Zorn. You'll often see his damage ratio get reset while you're using a move like Heaven's Gate. Which can be annoying, because you're clearly hitting him more than three times in a row. That means that uh, damage ratio is always kind of limited when it comes to bosses. I believe it's chance related. But it gets certain advantages to moves like Hellburner or even um, Absolute Zero or Quake. Because compared to many spells, they do all their damage in one hit. So if the enemy fails its chance to reset the damage ratio, then you get all the power from that spell concentrated into one hit, which is boosted by the damage ratio. I haven't tested that much in practice, but, you know, that seems like a thing that would be worth taking advantage of. Meteor Strike also is something that deals all its damage in one, and it's probably pretty powerful for its, uh, MP cost. I don't think I have any quick on any of my characters here, though. Do we think Stun Force is enough? Probably not, but let's find out. Nope. I won't lose, no matter what. I'm Can the Exide's Mega auto cancel snooze? In fact, does it even auto cancel all enemy targeted spells anyway? Yep. Lucky defend. Another thing to note there is that the damage ratio does not go up when you're defending. So obviously, if you're defending, you're not attacking, and so can be caught by a counterattack. I think that the Excise Omega might have a 70 cents counterattack instead of the usual 30%. So like, when you counterattack, um, it will boost the damage ratio immediately by a large amount. If you don't have any Jolt Counter skill equipped, then it's 30%. But if you do have Jolt Counter, then it varies by what level that skill is boosted, up to 200%. All my characters here, I think, have Jolt Counter boosted to, like, 3. So that's why they deal a whole lot of um, counter damage ratio. So you can use Counter even if you aren't using, like, Counter, because Counter is a skill which has to do with dodging. Like, if you sway out of the way of an enemy, then with Counter you'll counterattack. But Jolt Counter just attack is involved with the other kind of Counter, which is hitting it as a response to, like, hitting it while it's about to use a combo or critical. Or has just used a combo critical. Okay, Donna has Meteor Strike. Let's see if Donna can use Meteor Strike and Yuki can use... Well, no, that wouldn't work. Yuki could use Aerial Slash to... Um, to make it prone. But that wouldn't work because Yuki's Aerial Slash um, would just get auto-canceled and the Meteor Strike would be auto-canceled too, most likely. Now, 
that's also assuming that Yugi would even get to come before Donna gets to act. Which really isn't guaranteed. But let's set the same stage and try it out. Just a bit too slow. Stage, I don't know. Save states take kind of a while to load on this computer for some reason. Only on Mac. So let's try something which might take a bit longer to cast. Nope. I haven't checked how long every move takes to act yet. Looks like that's exactly the same time as Meteor Strike. I kind of doubt there are any other spells which take longer, but an item would probably work. Unless Donna has a uh, quick draw. Haha, uh, same timing. But yeah, just to be clear, items can be auto cancelled too. There we go. So, either Aerial Slash or Whirlwind here. I'm gonna try Whirlwind because I think it might line up with the other move a bit more closely. As long as they're closely timed, it doesn't really matter who goes first here. So, there we go. That was wondering. There's no delay on auto cancel by the looks of it. Maybe uh, auto cancel requires it to be an idle state, so I guess that means it goes back to idle immediately. And Yuki's only getting a 30% damage ratio here. Though it's kind of funny that Yuki's damage ratio is 130% here. Because he wasn't using a normal attack, he was just using... He was about to use a special move. I don't think that applies to enemies. Like, I think that if you cancel an enemy that's about to use, you know, between pop and act, it won't, um... If the enemy is between calm and act, your jolt counter or counter in general won't be applied to it. The damage ratio won't get boosted. Just go... It'll just go 100%, or 103, 106, 109, whatever. So I wonder why that works on the player character. Maybe it's just an exception for players, or maybe it has to do with auto-cancel. Players actually do have access to auto-cancel. Um, it's a skill extracted from like one of the really rare skill books. I think I have it in my inventory here, so it is probably worth checking out at some point. And you can just give it to yourself as an item, obviously. But my thinking with auto-cancel is that maybe if the enemy is... Maybe if the target of auto-cancel is... not actually, like, in that... Like, maybe it returns them to some in-between state or something. And that state is perceptible to counter. Or it just treats it as, like, a normal critical. On a non-preparing character. Maybe that's it. Maybe if a character is preparing to use a spell or any other such action, they are made 
to be um, invulnerable to the counter from the damage ratio from counters. But then once they're done preparing, um, they're susceptible again. And so by being like, right next to Act, um, they get uh, the damage ratio from counter. Dark Mist throws the character into the air, dealing 5% per hit instead of 3% to the damage ratio. So defending is actually a pretty effective way to reduce damage there, besides the basic damage reduction from defend. Try this. Auto cancel only affects moves which are specifically targeting the um, the equipper of auto cancel. So Excise Omega is the one with auto cancel here. The moves that are targeting your allies um, aren't going to make it auto cancel, which is a blessing. It would be pretty funny for a mod to change that. But another thing to note is that, that I can't really show in this fight, is that um, auto cancel won't affect it if the target is another allied enemy. So if the target were a last keeper or whatever the really big, um, like, the thing which spins, you know, those ones. If we were targeting those with a spell, um, the Excise Omega would not auto-cancel that, even if the Excise Omega is within the targeting range of that spell. So, Absolute Zero or Hal Slash on an enemy which is not the Excise Omega, but near the Excise Omega, could still result in a spell hitting Excise Omega in its idle state. Now, I'm not 100% sure how this applies for um, moves which target, like, the entire field. I believe that Excise Omega is always um, the first enemy on the IP gauge, like, it's always A. There is one battle where you target two Excise enemies, but, um, uh, the, the Yuki and Alfina versus two of them fight, at least I think? No, that's only versus one of them. Is there really no fight where you fight two of these guys at once? But anyway, I don't think there's a position where you wouldn't have an excise enemy in slot one. And I'm not really sure how uh, moves which target every enemy work. So let's check here and see who all of is supposedly targeting. He's casting Snooze, and it's on every enemy, but it's targeted towards Excise Omega, enemy A. It could be that that was just his previous target, and so when you cast Snooze, it doesn't change the target. It would be kind of funny if that, uh, meant you could accidentally cast Snooze on your party. So Alfina is casting Runner on Yuki right now, but the question is going to be, who does she return her focus to after 
she cast Runner? Like, is she going to start targeting... Is her model going to start facing the Exide's Omega, or is it going to stay pivoted on Yuki? Actually, I'm not really sure who Donna is facing right now. It doesn't really look like he's looking at the XI's enemy, and I believe she recently used um, an item. Anyway, watch Alfina while Yuki runs somewhere else. See, she pivots after him. But then she turns to face the X-Size Omega. So now she's targeted on it again. Which, like, makes sense. It would be kind of funny if the characters uh, were just left looking at each other. Sadly, that doesn't count as our own counter on it. And it can throw it in the air, though, apparently. There goes all of you, Zenby. And she's ostensibly using Snooze on the Excise Omega, which checks out. That's right, time for bed. It's not idling, so it can't cancel on auto cancel Snooze. It's actually in the air now, which is pretty funny. Not enough for Yuki's attacks to count as an aerial combo, for sure, but it's above the ground, its model isn't on the ground. So, Snooze, um... I think it, when the enemy animates, is, like, becoming asleep. It sort of makes the same motion as if it were being critical hit, which puts it into the air, like, briefly. But because the animation for Snooze ends, it leaves the enemy in the air. So now Yuki is starting to get in the air. I'm gonna put a save state here. There might be a couple things we can mess around with. Probably not, but you know. So the question is gonna be, how long can Yuki juggle this in the air? Probably not that long. It depends how long, uh, how many combos hits he has left on Flash. But can Alf join in? And still in the air. Lol. Now, if Alf were to use a special move here, like Rock Breaker, the enemy would fall to the ground, because it pauses, like, the whole area, but it doesn't pause animations, um, for, like, gravity. See, it falls. It, I think it dodges the one hit that Yuki had going. Or maybe that was just, like, a sound that was cued on that frame or whatever.
So not a lot to say about the aerial combo stuff going on there. Um, I think that Ulf was swinging at it, but once Yuki's combos ended, Ulf wasn't quick enough to juggle it. So the enemy fell. But one thing to note is that it um, got up. And from that point, dodged um, an incoming attack. Like it was able to sway, even though it was in the middle of being hit. Um, I think there's... I'm gonna rewind and try that again. I looked into this a lot a little while ago, but don't remember all the details on how it works. See how Ulf's last hit there didn't stagger the enemy? It didn't make a grunt sound. That's the easiest way to tell. I mean, I say stagger. Um, that's another term that they use for just making the enemy prone. Um, which means putting it into that recoil state. All of these are just the different words for the same thing. We're talking about changing it from idle to recoil. Or, if it were already recoiling, resetting the recoil animation. But there's only a chance that recoil, that a hit will actually make it recoil. Particularly for combos, I, I think this applies for special moves and stuff too. Um, but if an enemy doesn't recoil, then their recoil animation that's currently ongoing will continue. It's not going to be reset to the first frame. And once that recoil animation finishes, if it gets the chance to and is never reset, it's put in back into idle state. And in idle state, it's able to dodge. As well as perform auto-cancel and anything like that. So, um, I don't think this happened on the recent attempt here. Like, we did see Ulf's final hit not make it grunt and didn't reset its recoil. But, um, like, there wasn't another incoming attack at the same time. And it was also the end of the chain, so it was not the easiest, like, clearest demo of that, in effect. But I believe for the previous, like, the first time, um, it didn't take recoil from one of the attacks. Um, it didn't get put into prone, it didn't get its animation reset. So then it did the animation and return to idle while well, Ulf was still in a combo on it. But from that point, it dodged and performed a counterattack. Though I think that if the counterattack was on Ulf, Ulf probably dodged it. Way too fast. But see how his damage ratio only got to 103 instead of 130 here? I think that if an attack hits him while he's, um, while he's preparing a move, he's invulnerable to a damage ratio boost from counter. And from that point on, like, once the uh, attack hits him, it's, like, once the attack is a cancel and puts him out of the... Um, out of preparing to use a move, it also immediately sends him to a new position on the IP gauge, like it moves him some distance. I don't know if it's past the blue area or not. But when you get cancelled, you get put somewhere. And then he's not at act anymore. He's like actually put on the back end of the IP gauge. Um... So then he's not prone to being countered anymore. Like, counter only is gonna do anything when he's right near the end of the IP gauge at act. So that's why the following hits, even though he had been about to do something, um, don't deal their counter damage ratio. Why don't we try this? This is just a 
small user interface thing, but... If you're using a, an item or a spell which targets your allies, or a special move, um, then when you're navigating the cursor and using the left and right D-pad buttons, it'll like do so visually, you know, who's left of Alfina, who's right of Donna. This is just according to the general camera angle, I think. It's a nice, clean, left-to-right order. Now, in the hit point bar area, you can see that there's an orange line highlighting who's currently selected. There's a blue flashing bar showing who's acting, and then an orange bar showing the cursor selection. So we move to Donna, and the um, bar teleports to beneath Donna, the orange bar. This is a quick way to, uh, this will like help visually identify the hit points of whoever you're targeting. Um, when you're just using a healing herb and navigating with left and right, it's like you're just gonna look at the number that's visible you know, where the cursor is, where the above the character model. So Donna is at 3,253 HP, it's beneath the flashing blue arrow, it's to the right of the bombing orange arrow. Um, we don't want to heal her. And then you switch over to Ulf, and in the same position over Ulf's model, um, we've got that orange text, 1,628 HP, the hit points uh, bar is visually like a lot less progressed. This is gonna be like a really clean cue that Ulf is the target. You like, yes, you do want to heal him. But that's not the only way that the game is telling you this. The orange bar at the bottom is also highlighting Ulf, and um, it's making a clean line to indicate that Ulf is low on hit points. Um, because all the info is right there, and that orange line goes right over the 1628 orange text. So that's cool, um, but where this really becomes relevant is if you're navigating with the up and down um, cursor uh, D-pad buttons. So back to Alfina, if you press up, um, it's going to completely ignore model positions on the field, and instead target Yuki. This isn't super easy to tell when it's just between Yuki and Alfina. But the orange bar also animates. It's uh, moving, it's transitioning from Yuki's indicator on the HP bars to Alfina, vice versa. There's a couple frames there if you slow down the footage. I believe it's more clear if you navigate from Yuki to Donna because it's wrapping from top to bottom. See that? Again, that's with pressing the D-pad up and down instead of left and right. So it goes Yuki, Alfina, Ulf, Donna. And vice versa for upwards traveling. If you're targeting enemies, I believe that it'll go A, B, C, D, E, F. And maybe more, I forget. G, I think it supports up to 7. And obviously, like, the letter indicator can go higher than that if uh, earlier enemies get, like, discarded. There's only 7 or 8 slots total. But, you know. Can't show that here because, um... Enemy is. There's only one enemy. However, if you're playing blindfolded for some god awful reason, um, that's a key thing to keep in mind. Um, you can control the cursor navigation a lot more predictably that way. Get ready to fry, maggots! Inferno 
I was reminded of when I used Inferno Spike earlier and it counted as him learning the new technique, but then the enemy just auto-canceled it, which was pretty funny. But anyway, I mean, this is kind of just obvious, but when you, like, a move, I believe every move has a hidden value for how close it is to learning the next secret technique, or secret method, or whatever. Oops, I actually managed to accidentally uh, disconnect. <laughs> uh, set my phone to airplane mode. Oops. At some point, the Mumble server will recognize that QN phone hasn't sent any things and then kick it. I assume. Yeah, there we go. But anyway, um, what was I talking about? The previous time when we used Inferno Spike and he learned the secret technique, and that got auto cancelled. So, um, every move has a certain amount, like a certain hidden value that's progressing on your save file whenever you use a move. It's gonna get it closer to learning the next secret method. Even when it reaches 100%, I think it's still only like a probability-based thing. What's probably happening is that it's like increasing the likelihood anytime you use a move or whatever. Maybe it has to pass a certain threshold before uh, counting. But anyway, however it works, um, that gets decided like when you select the move immediately. Which makes sense, because if you learn a secret method, then it's gonna use that move instantaneously. Um, I guess what it doesn't guarantee is whether or not the secret hidden value is going up when you... Um, is it, like, is it going up when you select the move, or is it going up when you use the move, when you reach ACT? But we do know that the probability roll of, like, whether or not you learn a new secret technique is when you choose it from Khan, which makes sense. And we can identify whether it goes up immediately or later by repeatedly using a move a million times but ensuring it gets cancelled every time. Or, I don't know, that the party flees or something before it gets the chance to actually reach act. If you keep or to eventually um, learn the new secret method, then that would say that it's probably getting the value incremented as soon as... Um, as soon as you select it. If not, if he, like, never learns it after a million tries, or it takes a lot longer than expected to based on a normal observation, um, then it's probably getting incremented when he actually uses the move. If he had, uh, warp shoes, he could probably cancel this, as is he probably can't. Let's try it. Never mind, he is that fast. Well, he's not selling it per se. <laughs> he just got put in a way worse position for everyone. Alphina saved. Check how it boosted the damage ratio on Yuki super high. If Ulf had been the one attacking there, he'd have been dead for sure. Yuki was probably around full HP though, so he made it. Oh no, yeah, the damage ratio bar, he actually shows where his hit points were previously. Um, yes, this is it! I was supposed to heal 2400 HP if you pay attention to the item description to 4800 because Alfina has um, item master equipped.
Lol. I have no idea how to avoid this. Combo is super risky because um, if her hit does, if her cards don't hit it, then it's not going to be prone. It's going to reach act, and then it's going to use deadly drive and hit her while she's definitely in a state where she would receive the counter. Plus 30% damage to both hits. Um, and there's also the, prob the possibility that her cards wouldn't even make it prone. If her cards do make it prone, um, then Alfina could reach Calm and then use Comet Spike. So let's see what cards have in favor for us. Yeah, she's way too slow anyway. It looks like when she's dodging away, that's not prone to counter, though, which is kind of interesting. I don't think this will act as a counter, though. No. Unfortunately, counter attacks themselves. And I do mean counter attacks, like the counter attack that happens after you dodge. How could this happen? She's dead. But anyway, the counter attack uh, that happens after a sway. Nice does not leave you prone to being countered. I think just because you're not in your acts, honestly. Please, get up! Um, the same computer, which I usually run Debian, Debian, Linux. I'll be alright. Um, Save state slowed way quicker. But moves like Inferno, and Inferno Spike, Red Lotus, and Resurrect, which have kind of crazy visual effects, those run like full speed on this on Mac, which is nice. I don't know why they're slower. I guess it's just different graphics drivers. It's OpenGL hardware either way, though. I guess it's different calls. I kind of want to say, I kind of want Yuki to stay out of the way of anything here. Yuki <laughs> 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 knocked it, uh, Ulf knocked it out of the way of Yuki's boom. Can't say that's a counter because it was right at act. This Same here. Sting a little. Oh, never mind. Maybe because it was invisible. Who knows? I think her card hit it while it was invisible. Kind of like Ulf's Rockbreaker did. Which apparently makes it invulnerable to counter, I guess. I mean, it hit like instantaneously when it teleported to her. So it probably hadn't reappeared yet. Um, because its damage ratio like wasn't boosted there, I don't think. It would have been 200%. Maybe it got to 130, but I, I'm, I'm hoping it didn't. Otherwise, nothing makes sense. Oh, divine comet! Slice through the pitch black night. This is only targeting Alf. Either it's a normal attack, or it's some really awful, like 
I don't know, Deadly Forest or whatever it's called. Normal attack, nice. So, is off quick enough? Who knows? Yeah. No one can stop me now. But is Yuki quick enough to avoid getting counter attacks? Definitely not. Pick a card. Any card. You're probably still low region here. Wow. So it wasn't made prone from either of Yuki's two hits there. But it also didn't slay either of them. The 45% roll there didn't hit. So Yuki was safe. However, I'm betting that it's using Overclaws given the position of everyone here. No, Deadly Drive. Um, we're gonna try Common Spike. There's a possibility that the Excise Omega will reach Act first. Even though um, Common Spike is instantaneous.
All right, I'm back. My bad. Um, sometimes you gotta AFK. Anyway, I was talking about the not quite instantaneousness of instant moves. Comet Spike uh, would activate instantaneously, like you would set her to 100% on act, and then she would use the move. But that doesn't guarantee that it'll go before something else, which is just so close to act. I don't know 100% how this works. There is a possibility that X-Mas Omega will use Deadly Drive first, because it moves really, really quick along the IP gauge and is, like, basically there already. I believe that the way the game works is that it executes, it, like, it ticks every character forward um, by the amount that they're moving along the IP gauge, their speed, um, by one by one. Like, it doesn't do it all at once or anything. It runs, like, a full tick moving them uh, further along the IP gauge, and if they reach act, executing their action. Um, and I believe that it does this um, by order of whoever's closest to act first, whoever's nearest the end of the IP gauge. So it would tick the XI's Omega, which is right at, basically right at act, before ticking Alfina, who is at Com. So when Alfina uses Comet Spike, it's going to set her speed that she moves along the IP gauge to 100% in one frame. But it's not actually going to move her, like, on this frame. That's just the next thing that's what's going to happen next frame. And the next size Omega um, moves first on that next frame because it's closer to the end of the IP gauge than Alfina. And so then it's going to reach Act before her because it's close enough that it would reach act in one frame as well, even without moving at 100% per frame. Um, but the timings might be a little off here, or I could be off about that theory, so there's still the possibility that Alfina will go first here. I don't think she will, though. Let's see. Oh, divine <laughs> oh, there we go. So I could be totally wrong. Or it could have just been not quite there. Maybe the execution order is something different. Well, it's basically dead at this point. This might sting a little. That is it. Man, I'm ready to drop. Let's go get something to eat. Now on one hand, it would boost the XP for that fight. Even though I was fighting a super hard enemy. But I did get free XP from the lost keepers I killed, so it works out. But yeah, generally I don't mess with cheats much on the save. Um, exception. The field menu here has a map number for uh, teleporting. It does what you expect it to. Those map numbers, uh, I have a list of them somewhere. <laughs> Anywho, supper's ready here, so um, yeah, there's a there's a whole lot more 
to everything here, but that covers like a billion different small things. So I'll stop the recording here. And hopefully my audio was okay and not overpowered by the game. We'll see.